We'll finish off our texture by taking some time to fine tune the materials. Since everything is created with fill layers and masks, we have lots of flexibility to adjust what's needed. And the first thing I don't really like is the overall noise detail coming through on the dark areas. I'll scroll down to the base materials and I can see that it's coming from the base steel that we just added. I'm going to disable the surface details and remove this finish from the base section. We'll jump up to our paint layer and I want to add some small bumps for imperfections to the height. I'll add a fill, isolate just the height with a small positive value for now. Add a black mask and I'll right click and choose fill and I'll just drag this dirt 2 onto the layer. It's a bit too strong so we'll just lower the height. And we can also see that it's bleeding onto our dark material here. Looking at the mask, it's clear we have too much in the selection. We'll just go to polygon fill, choose UV selection, and with a black value, mark out the areas that I don't want the little lumps to show up in. For our dark matte material, I just want a little bit more color variance. When you're fine tuning things, sometimes it's difficult to see what you're doing in full shaded mode. So instead, I'll use the drop down and choose base color to isolate that view. Now let's go ahead and add some hue shifts to the material. I'll add a fill, I'll isolate base color, and just choose something in the dark bluish purple range. And let's try one of those smart masks again. I'll try surface worn, which gives me an interesting look to it. Let's just go back to the base color and adjust it so it's not too obvious. Lastly, we can chip off some of that yellow paint by going to its mask. I'll create a paint chip brush simply by removing the alpha, adjusting the size, the spacing, size jitter, angle, and position jitter. I'll lay down some big strokes and remove them back to create a subtle wear effect. We could use a smart mask to generate the damaged edges, but I just think that painting them in gives it a lot more of a personal touch to it. To enhance the look, I'll just add a little bit of height to the paint layer. We'll give it a very low value of 0 0.01. We can do the same to our decals. Instead of using a black mask, this time instead we'll use a white mask on the entire folder and paint using black to chip away the decals using a very, very small fine brush. So I'll just go around the model, adding a few chips and scratches here and there. Before we do our final export, we're going to rebake our textures at its highest resolution. I'll head back to the texture set settings, go back to bake mesh maps. This time I'll choose 4096 for output size and pick 4x4 anti-aliasing quality and we'll just hit bake. Now you'll notice the bake time is much longer now that we've doubled our texture size and added anti-aliasing. Once that's done, I'll also export this as 4096. Here we are back in Eevee for our final reload. I'll just rotate the light around and give ourselves a pat on the back for not falling asleep through the whole narration. Now it's totally up to you on how you want to render the final object for presentation. I'm not going to do too much, just add a huge shift to the light and I'll just hit F12 for a full render. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the lesson so far. If you're happy with this result, we're pretty much done the art side of the course. So feel free to stop if this satisfies your goals. Otherwise, you can head on to the bonus section for a little bit more information.